Hello YouTube and welcome back. In this video we're going to be talking about valve covers and a lot of times you want to put a vintage valve cover on a late model engine. This may look cool to some of y'all but some of y'all might not really get off to a valve cover like this and you have a late model cylinder head but you want to use a vintage valve cover with Chevrolet across the top of it. How are you going to do that? There's several things that you're going to come across. A, uh, the very first part is it's not going to bolt on. The bolt pattern is not the same in this valve cover to this valve cover. Most Chevrolets have a standard valve cover that fits a big year from 19, I don't know, 60 on up, 58 on up, all have the same bolt pattern. Then you get into the 80s and you have a center bolt valve cover. Don't hold me to the exact uh, year, but in general you have the very early model valve covers which have a different bolt pattern. Then you have the standard GM valve cover which fits many, many years. And then you have the late model with the center bolt. So what do you do if you want to put this valve cover on an engine that had this valve cover on? There is an option for you. The option is to purchase a pair of these. And these are valve cover adapters. So this valve cover adapter will go on. You see the difference in the valve cover staggered bolt pattern. So this will fit the cylinder head and allow you to put in now a early model valve cover. It's a little spacer. A lot of times you can't even tell the spacers there. It does also help if you're running a roller rocker to raise the valve cover up a little bit. I will take you to the back and we'll show you how to install these. All right, one of the problems you're gonna have is this valve cover does not have a place to put oil in, into your engine. Originally this engine would have had a breather tube on the intake. You pop it off and you add your oil there. Also, it would have had a downdraft tube in the back that would have just uh, let the pressure release off the back of the engine, down the back, out by the oil pan. You never see it, but it's actually just uh, puffing smoke down at the bottom. And that's, that was good enough for back in the day. In the modern engine, we have a positive crankcase ventilation system. So we have to have on one valve cover a breather, air to go in. On one valve cover, we need to have a place for a PCV valve for air to come out. So that air can go in one side, go through the engine, come out the other valve cover and go into the air cleaner and down the carburetor. And that removes all of the contaminant gases that are in your crankcase, which will actually etch the bearings. You don't want those, those gases that pass by the rings every single time that you have combustion. A perfectly built motor, brand new, is still gonna have blow-by. All engines have blow-by, some more than others, and you have gases from the combustion chamber in the crankcase. We wanna remove them. So having a breather on one side and a PVC valve on the other side, lets fresh air come in, flow all the way around into the uh, carburetor, and then get recombusted in the combustion chamber, real clean, real efficient, and that's really the way that you wanna go. You wanna pull good vacuum from the rings. In late model engines, they have low tension rings, and if you start messing with the crankcase ventilation, your motor will start smoking. You actually gotta pull vacuum on the crankcase to help the ring seal. All right, now that you know why we need to have breather holes or holes in the valve covers to add oil and to pull vacuum from one side and to have it breathe air on the other side, how are we gonna do that with this valve cover? Unfortunately, there's not really a way to do it in this valve cover without modifying the valve cover. What I like to do is take existing aftermarket intake. Edelbrox intakes have the front pad there but they're not machined. But what I mean about the front pad is an angled pad at the front of the intake that we actually put on the Bridgeport drill for the breather tube. We drill in the back by the, by the distributor in the back between the carburetor and the distributor. We pop a hole in there. I TIG weld the baffle on the inside. I pull my PVC vacuum from the back of the intake. It's behind the carburetor, uh, underneath the distributor. You don't even see it and you can't even know that we've now added a PCV valve to the engine. 
on the front of the engine where the breather would normally be, fresh air is going in. It's not as it's not the same as going from one side of the engine through the other, but it is going from the front of the intake across and out the back of the intake better than nothing. Um, actually works quite well. We've done a lot of three do setups. We did a lot, of, a lot of vintage setups that we put in aluminum intake, do that modification, get rid of the Edelbrock, paint it. You don't even know it has an aftermarket intake. All right, let's get out to the shop and I'm gonna show you how we modified these valve covers to fit on our later model engine and how it's gonna work and how I did it. All right, here we have a Chevy valve cover. They're getting hard to find and we want to get rid of the dents in the valve cover. Okay, we've removed the little animals that were inside. Let's go and start by choosing our tools. I'm starting right at the seam that I can see. be scared of what you're doing because that won't be a good thing so what I'm seeing I see a little low spot right in there and I'm feeling it and there's a low spot right in there I actually prefer to leave the paint on there for now because it's showing me the low spots. Got a little low spot on this side. So I gotta work. What I'm having to work right now is right here. I'm also gonna show you how I'm using the metal table. See how we did. Okay, so what we have now, let me get a little closer. There we go. What we have now, we have some low spots. You can see them. What are we gonna do? We're gonna knock those low spots out and file some more. And that's what basically we're doing. We're letting the file shows the low spots. When we're done, we want it all smooth. And remember that one had a big old dent across the Chevrolet. There's still one over here, a low spot. And there's still a low spot over here, just to show you. So you can see how it's got a real big low spot over here. Let's keep working these right here. We're almost there. Okay, what you can see what I've done here is I've taken some silicon bronze and the reason I'm using silicon bronze to weld with is because it doesn't take a lot of heat. And I don't want to really put a lot of heat in here. I could TIG weld it with with any kind of metal any kind of welding you can go in there spot weld it with the mig welder um all that is preferred i use silicon bronze and just putting four little tabs in there it's not going to go anywhere
All right, we're gonna spray them. I like to use a little self-etching primer. Self-etching primer is gonna embed itself in the metal. It has a chemical reaction. It digs itself. I'm not a chemist, but it's gonna actually embed itself in the metal, which is what we want. So I'm just doing a little rattle can, self-etching primer. A little bit on the edges. Okay, we've sprayed them and they look really good if you want to take them to the next level take a little bit of scotch bright the finest scotch bright you can get and just lightly scuff them you're not really gonna be doing much than taking off any orange peel or dust that You can get a nice paint job from a rattle can if you take your time. Blow dry them and shoot some black on them. How about that? All right, we're going to be using an Ervo engine paint. It's a high heat engine paint. Good brand, good product. We've used this pretty much on all our bills. Remember, light coats don't need to get crazy. I like to spray a little bit right underneath the edge all the way. You can see that or not, you can. Light coat, kind of like a little scratch coat. We're not covering everything up this first go around. There we go. Spray from one side and let it exit. Don't sit there and stop on any spot in the valve cover. So start way out here and come into it and end out here. So start and end off the valve cover. Don't sit there and start on the valve cover. You'll get a spot, it'll run. You wanna make sure your start and stop points are not on whatever you're painting. If I'm painting here, don't 
start there, start here, go to that spot and exit over here. And let this, the band come across it. I don't know, y'all you, know how to paint. I most definitely do not need to show y'all how to paint. Take it to the next level and we're going to use an Ervil engine clear. So it's a universal clear. They've dried about 15 minutes. It's, it's still tacky. Just enough to that I can now shoot a little clear in here. On top of what we have. Thing didn't go all crooked on me. Son of a biscuit. Should have probably left it alone. Okay, here we are in the back of the shop and you have these valve covers on this engine and it doesn't really have the look that the customer wants. And he wants it to look, you know, somewhat vintage, even though it has aluminum heads and all kinds of chrome goodies. So these are gone. And he wants the original valve covers that... Voila. Now we have these. Okay, if we were going to put these on this engine, that would be awesome if they would work. But if you notice, there's no holes down here for the valve covers. These are vintage covers and the bolt pattern is not the same. They're freshly painted, so we don't want to put too many hands on. So what are we going to do? We are going to take these nice adapters that are gonna go on there. There's two studs that go across the top. And then there's two countersunk bolts right here. And they're gonna take a countersunk Allen bolt that's gonna go right in there. There isn't gonna be a gasket underneath. There's no need for a gasket. That's the way this kit comes. Could you put a gasket underneath there if you wanted to have a little more room because of rocker arms? You most definitely could. I like these comp rockers because they're actually really robust and thin and small in the sense of I can fit these a lot of times in underneath the factory valve cover without any spacers or modifications whatsoever. So all we're going to do is put a little bit of RTV on here and then we will put them right on. That's all it's going to use is just RTV. We have a light little bead of RTV on the bottom of these and we're going to actually just basically glue these down. Look at there. That will keep any oil from coming out. 
Then we're going to use these Allen screws. We don't need any Loctite or anything. We don't even need to worry about them because they're underneath the valve cover and they're not going to come loose. If you feel like doing anything, put a little drop of RTV on the thread just to, just because. But there isn't anything that's going to be really happening here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit around because I am paranoid. I do have a little bit of paranoia in me. Look at that. I'm going to keep any oil from getting in this hole and leaking out. Just a little bit right around the corner there. Those also do the centering. So we'll center up. As you tighten these, they're going to center themselves up because it's a counter bore. Okay. Look at there. What do we have anywhere else? No. I liked it. Nice and clean. There's no RTV silicone. You can just see a little bit. Very little that squeezed out, which is what I want to see. I want to make sure we're sealed. Now at this point, we're going to take his existing valve covers, gaskets, that he already had. No need getting new ones. It comes with the studs. And what I do notice is the studs go into oil. So once again, paranoia. Let's not take a chance of leaking oil up the valve cover bolt. Put a little RTV on the threads. It will seal them and then once it cures, it will keep them from wanting to come back out. What can I also do? Is I can take my Allen wrench, put it over here and figure out how tall that stud is sticking out and screw these here till they're equal to that. And it's actually, when it bottoms out, I think we're there. Look at that. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Okay, we're back. Went to the parts room and got a set of Felpro gaskets. And if you'll notice, they make them for early and late in the same gasket. And you can see that or not. So we won't have a problem now. Have a problem. There we go. And that's how they're going to go on. Just like that. I'm going to go ahead and glue these on the valve cover. And we'll be right back. Okay, I've glued the gaskets on with some 3M gasket adhesive onto the valve covers. Now they can come off and on if you got to do a valve adjustment or anything. And you don't have to rip the gaskets up when they come off they will just come right up next if i don't drop this valve cover is we can drop this baby on these really do need the gm little tabs and this is what i'm talking about he should go ahead and get some of these little tabs to go down on there 
if the customer does not have them off his original valve covers, then we'll find him some or see if there's some in the aftermarket world. But you most definitely want to put these in. A, I think they look cool anyway, but it helps spread the weight when you tighten the bolts down and you don't want to bend the valve covers all up. The kit comes with these little locking serrated nuts. We'll use those for now. Like I said, I'll ask the customer if he has the hold downs and we'll see if we can't get them a set if he doesn't. For now, I'm going to put these on just to snug the covers until we talk to the customer. You can see on this side here different view little RTV just squeezed out and probably need to just leave it alone but I just can't there we go next now is let's go ahead and pop in our grommets done look at there now let's go ahead and get this one done RTV on the bottom. Velpro gaskets glued on the bottom. Okay, we're almost done. Put in our grommet. We're back. Here we are with the finished product. We have early model valve covers on a later model engine. We use adapter plates to put them on. Here we go. We had to pop holes in the valve covers, but here's an alternative way that actually doesn't look bad. It actually now makes this engine kind of pop. It's going in a 57 Chevy. These were his original valve covers. They had dents on them. He decided to go ahead and sacrifice them because he wanted this look. Here's our air in, here's our vacuum out to the carburetor. It is clean, it's neat. There is an option to put vintage valve covers on your engine. I also dabbled in a little bit of showing you how to, to take out some dents on the valve cover. That will be a future video on how to repair dented valve covers. If you wanna see them, hit a like, subscribe, leave me a comment and say you'd like to see how to repair the valve covers. I'll get a little bit more in depth of how I took out all the dents. These had dents all, all across them. But all that being said, have a good 4th of July weekend. Here's the finished product. There is an alternative to putting in vintage valve covers on a late model engine and giving it the vintage look. All right, after me, I'm out of here.
All right, you notice I went out that way and came in this way. What's up with that? I don't know. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a simple little video, and with this adapter, we can do a late model cylinder head with an early model valve. There's also another dilemma that you probably never thought of until after the fact, and it will bite you in the butt. A, one, two, or three is how are you going to put
All right, we're back, and this would be a good time to hit the like and subscribe button. If you're new to the channel and you're not subscribed, why aren't you? Um, leave me a comment. Tell me what you'd like to see. Tell me if this was something that actually helped you or didn't help you. I don't normally like to punch holes in Chevy valve covers. In this particular instance, the customer did not want to change the intake manifold. Um, he actually liked this idea. So what I'm giving you is an option that will work. Um, the other option, like I said, we've done it many times, is mo modifying the intake manifold. That works perfectly. This is actually going to work better. It's going to work like a factory system. The only adverse effect is that we have a hole on the top of our Chevrolet valve covers. But instead of putting them on in odd places, I chose the E instead of the H or the C, and actually works out pretty good. Another tip that you might not know about is that you need a baffle inside. If we start and we put a PCV valve on the valve cover, we will suck oil in here into the intake manifold and your engine will smoke. So what do we have? We have some baffles. Don't stop now. I may put a link at the bottom of the page. If not, call Shop Mom and she'll send you out a set of these. Also, we have grommets. So everything is readily available. With this baffle that's made for an aluminum valve cover, I actually took and put it in the bottom for four little spot wells and look at there. We have baffles now that look like a factory valve cover with baffles. Here's an aftermarket valve cover, and you see their baffle. So you always got to have a baffle. What is a baffle? As it's pulling vacuum from here, it's stopping oil from going up your P PVC valve. So you got to have a baffle, something that's overlooked. And I see a lot of people that our engines are smoking, and it's as simple as sucking oil up your PVC valve. And we don't want that now, do we? All right. So. Once we put our holes in, our grommets in, our baffles are spot welded in place, on this side will actually be a breather hose. So here will either be a, if he wants to put a baffle here, or not a baffle, on this side, if he wants to put a breather, that, that would work. I like to put a tube in, like a factory tube that goes underneath the air cleaner. Um, that way you're getting filtered air. You wanna make sure whatever you put in here, air's going in that we want to have filtered air so take it to the bottom of the air cleaner minimum i like to do that or put a little f filter up here on top that's what's going to be on this side on this side it's where we're going to pull vacuum from and once again we have baffles on each side and like i said they don't look that bad i'm going to go ahead and prime and paint these and we'll put them on the valve cover and We'll show you how they look. I don't, I don't know if I liked all that. All right, we're back. Hope you've enjoyed that. Um, I don't know why you hope you enjoyed it or didn't hope you enjoyed it. I don't have an ending. Ending's not working. Okay, now you've seen how I've modified the valve covers, how I've added baffles to the inside, popped holes in them. We have grommets that are going to go in place. This is a factory replacement grommet. You could use all the original grommets. We have aftermarket grommets that are either this style or just like the OEM square style. We have a PVC valve and we have baffles. All of this are now installed on these valve covers. We're going to go ahead and paint them and put them on the engine. Okay, we're back from the back of the shop. Um, you've seen how I popped the holes in. Actually, I didn't even do videos of popping holes in them or anything like that. So forget about all that. I don't have a good ending. Oops. Okay, we went from our stock valve covers 
I stripped them, cleaned them, removed the dents from them just because I didn't like all the little dents that it had. These had already been primered and painted by the customer at, at a paint shop. Not the paint shop, but a different uh, body shop. And they left the dents all in them, so it didn't make any, any difference. I stripped them. I took all the dents out of them. Dent removal on a valve cover, um, it's not that hard and it's actually a lot of fun. I've also spot welded some baffles on the inside. That's going to help us out and not sucking in old through the PCV valve. I don't really know. All right. I don't know about all right even. I hope it's been informative and giving you an idea of now how to uh, solve the dilemma of putting an early model valve cover on a late model cylinder head. Um, if it has, leave me a comment. Let me know that this is exactly what you're looking for. Maybe not. I just want to pat myself on the back. I don't know. Um, if you're new to the channel, um, hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification button if you want to be notified when I'm going live. As for me, it's going to be a 4th of July weekend. I need to get these painted and on the engine. So I'm heading back out to the shop and we'll see you on the next one.